Welcome to day 12 we begin. We'll be continuing from Exodus chapter 6 to chapter 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will let them go, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. I And I have remembered my covenant. Therefore said to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from, from under the borders of, Egyptians, of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who bring you out from the boldness of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I saw to Jacob, which I saw to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke, spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not eat Moses because of anguish, anguish and of spirits and cruel bondage. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go in, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, The children of Israel have not eaten me. Now then shall Pharaoh eat, it, shall Pharaoh eat me, for I am of uh, how then shall Pharaoh eat me, for I am of uncircumcised lips. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. And give them a command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of of their father's house, the son of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Anok, Palu, Ezron, and Can and Kami. These are the sons. These are families of Reuben. And the sons of Simeon were Jamal, Jami, Oad, Jaki, Zoar, and Shur, the son of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generation. Gershon, Kohat, and Merai. And the years of the life of Levi were 137. The sons of Gershon were Libni and Shimi, and Shimi, according to their families. And the sons of Kohat were Amra, Isar, Abram, and Uziah. And the years of the life of Kohat we are 133. The sons of Merari we are Mali and Mushi. These are the families of Levi according to their generations. Now Amram took for himself Jukebet, his father's sister, as wife. And she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram we are 137. The sons of Isha, Ish the sons of Isa we are Korah. Nefeg and Zikri, and the sons of Uziel were Misha, El Zavan, and Zikri. Aaron took to himself Elisheba, daughter of Aminadab, sister of Nashon, as wife, and she bore him Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Itama. And the sons of Korah were Azze, Elkanah, and Abiasa. These are the families of the Korah at Eleazar, Aaron's son took for himself one of the daughters of Putiel as wife, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the father's house of the Levites, according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring us the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their armies. These are the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are the same Moses and Aaron. When it came to pass, on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh eat me? So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh, to send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will add in Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not eat you, so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people. 
and children and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by great judgment. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of each of Israel from among them. Then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the, just as the Lord commanded them. So they did. And Moses was eighty years old, and Aaron eighty three years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speak to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went in went in to Pharaoh, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded them. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servant, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also caught the white men and the sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt they also did in like manners, in like manner with their enchantment. For every man chewed down his rod when they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's earth grew out and did not eat them, as the Lord had said. So the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's earth is hard. He refused to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water, and you shall stand by the river as bank to meet him. On the road which was turned to a serpent, you shall take in your hand, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed, until now you will not hear. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood, and the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink, and the Egyptians will lose to drink the water of the river. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, said to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their, stream, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over all, the, all, all their pools of water, that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the road and struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died. The river stank, and the Egyptian could not drink from the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart grew at, and it did not eat them. As the Lord had said, and Pharaoh, and Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his earth moved by this. So all the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink, because they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river. Chapter 8 And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you receive if you refuse to let them to let them go, behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs, so the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedroom, on your bed, into the houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens, and into your kneading bowl, and the frogs shall come up, up on you, on your people, and on your servants. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the river, as, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frog came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantment, and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor of saying, When I shall intercede for you, for your servants and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only. So he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Let it be according to your word, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from you, from your houses, from your servants and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the courtyard, and out of the field. They gathered, to get, they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw 
that there was relief. He hardened his heart and did not eat them, as the Lord had said. So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod. And strike the dust of the land, so that it may become light throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with a rod, and struck the dust of the earth, and it became light on man and beast. All the dust of the land became light throughout all the land of Egypt. Now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth light, but they could not. So there were lights on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew out and he did not eat them, just as the Lord has said. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise up in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he, as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a, I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. And the Lord did so. Six swarms of flies came into the house of Pharaoh, into his servant's house, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh's, then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, before their eyes, we did not stone us. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, and He will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away, intercede for me. Then Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord, that the swarm of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarm of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh added his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Chapter 9 Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord, God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go, and still hold them, behold, the, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle, in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the oxen, and on the sheep. A very severe pestilence. And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. Then the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So the Lord did this thing on the next day, and on the livestock of and all the livestock of Egypt died, but of the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. Then Pharaoh sent, and indeed, not even one of the livestock of the Israelites was dead, was the act of Pharaoh became hard, and he did not let the people go. So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves handfuls of ashes from the furnace, and let Moses scatter it toward the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh, and to become fine dust in all the land of Egypt, and to cause boils that break out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Then they took ashes from the furnace and stood between and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses scattered them toward heaven, and they caused boys that break out in sores on, on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses before Moses because of the boys, for the boys were on the magicians and, and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord had in the hearts of Pharaoh, and he did not eat them, just as the, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrew, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For at this time I will send all my plagues 
to in your very heart and on your servants and on your people that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Now, if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. But indeed, for this purpose I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. As yet you exhort yourself against my people in that you will not let them go. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause every I will cause very heavy hail to rain down, such as has not been seen in Egypt since its founding until now. Therefore, send now and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field. For the hail shall come down on every man and every animal which is found in the field and is not brought home, and they shall die. You will fear the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh, made the servants and his livestock flee to the houses, but he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt, on man, on beast, and on every herb of the field, throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire darted to the ground, and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail, so very heavy, that there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. And the hail struck throughout the whole land of Egypt, and all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail struck every and the earth struck every herb of the field and broke every tree of the field, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no ill. And Pharaoh sent and came and called for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and my people and I are wicked. Entreat the Lord that there, as there may be no more mighty thundering and ill. For it is. For it is enough. I will let you go, or you shall stay no longer. So Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more air, that you may know that the earth is the Lord. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord. So the flax and the barley were struck, for the barley was in the earth, and the flax was in the pot, but the wheat and the spirit were not struck. For they are late crop. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hand to the Lord. Then the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain was not poured on the earth. And, the, and when Pharaoh saw that the rain, the hail, and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet more, and he hardened his heart. And he and his servants, so the earth of Pharaoh was at, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Chapter 10. Final chapter. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have added this heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine before him, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your son's son the mighty things I have done in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that you may not that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron came in to Pharaoh and said to them, Thus is the Lord God of the Hebrews. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you refuse to let my people go, they will tomorrow I will bring locusts into your territory, and they shall cover the face of the earth, so that no one will be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of what is left, which remains to you from the air, and they shall eat every tree which grows up for you out of the field. They shall fill your houses, the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor your father's fathers have seen since the day that they were on the earth to this day. And he turned and went out from Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh's son said, said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not yet know that Egypt is destroyed? So Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God, who are the ones? Who are the ones that are going? And Moses said, We will go with our young and our old, 
with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds in the go. For we must hold the feast to the Lord. Then he said to them, The Lord had better be with you when I let you and your little ones go. Beware, for evil is ahead of you. Not so. Go now, you who are men, and serve the Lord. For that is what you desired. And they were di and they were driven out, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt, and eat every herb of the land, and all the ale, and all that the ale has left. So Moses stretched out his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. They were very severe. Previously, there had been no such locusts as they, nor shall they be after them. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they ate every up of the land, and all the fruits of the trees which the air had left. So there remained nothing green on the trees or on the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in it, and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore please forgive my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God, that he may take away from me this death only. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord turned a very strong west wind, which took the locust away and blew them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in the territory of Egypt, but the Lord added Pharaoh's out. Pharaoh's heart, and did not let the children of Israel go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, as there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days they did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. But Moses said, You must also give us sacrifices and bonds offering, means that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also shall go with us, not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. And even if we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord added, Pharaoh's at, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me, take it to yourself, and see my face no more. For in the day you see my face, you shall die. So Moses said, You have spoken well, I will never see your face again. We've come to the end of the 12 days reading. It has been helping us on this journey. <laughs> and I've read 12 days. 12 days. And God will continue to help us to finish it by the grace of God. Continue to watch. Subscribe so you get a notification when the next reading comes out. And thank you very much. Bless you.